Smith, and she just listened to her cry and didn't say nothing and actually got up and walked away. Well, you're speaking of two different incidents, uh, but... uh, you know, yeah, well, of course, you know, if if uh, a client needs to contact me, they should have my business card, right? Yeah, they should have your business card, but you want to go see her, and you clearly said in your book you hated to go see her. I don't understand the question. I'm, I I see my client What's because that's what lawyers do. Yeah, that's what lawyers do. But, you know, she did tell you to hold off on going into that law firm with your friends, you do work for her, right? So your question is you think that I, she is a court-appointed client and should control my ability to go into practice for myself? Is that what you're saying? No, what I'm saying is, you know, do what you want. Go in there and go to your own practice and all that stuff. You know, you're a lawyer. But I didn't understand why you went up there to go see her, showed her your business card to your new law office, and didn't say nothing for 45 minutes, but sat there and listened to her cry, and didn't say nothing at all, and got up and walked off. Well, again, you're conflating you're conflating two incidents, so that's probably why you don't understand, because they're two separate incidents. And, um, okay. Anything you, else? You said, yeah, um... You, uh, well, let me say that, you know, uh, stubborn things are, you know, stu- stubborn mm-hmm. things are hard facts, right? Um, facts are stubborn things. Yeah, there we go. Facts are, yeah, okay, all right. Um, <laughs> you also said that you read every single letter that she got while she was in Australia? No. Why was that in the book? It was not in the book. You said you had you had to sit back and read every single letter that she got while she was in there. That's not true. That's not true? No, I didn't say that in the book. And you had to listen to all her calls? I listened to her jail calls, yes. I talk about that. Yeah. Okay, we have to uh, go because there are other people waiting. Thank you for the call. Um Let's go out to uh, area code is 512. Uh, your line is open. Please state your name and where you're calling from. You're next on uh, King Jordan Radio. Hi, this is Sarah Lee. I called yesterday. And Hi, I'll Sarah. Be brief. Hi, how sure. are you? Okay. I got one thing to, I got one thing to tell you. You know, I told sure. you I was a writer. I emailed you my book. And yes, just so I got you it. Can Okay, I just wanted to verify, let you know that it's true, and I'm not making any money, so I'm not. It's not selling, so it's not promotion. And just sure. to prove to you what you said about you know not being just behind a computer, so I appreciate right. that because I don't mind speaking my mind. And anyway, okay. there's one thing you had mentioned about uh, Travis being the aggressor in sex. Jody was just as equal. Okay, and my. my um, only question is, to Kirk is this from me, I know you're talking about. Yeah, uh, no, I was just saying. You said yesterday if Travis hadn't used her for sex, well, if Jody was an aggressor too, and she liked the sex too. I'm just clarifying that that it wasn't just okay. him using her But you have her any for th- any questions or thoughts for Mr. Yeah, Nermy? Yeah. Uh, that's it. I only have one question, and I know you said you're going to do it in another book. But I sure, sure would like to know your theory what happened on June 4th. Please. Well, you're right. You. That's, well, that's going to come out in book three. Uh. <laughs> Thank you so much for the call. Let's go out to Florida. Uh, please make this quick, uh, quick. 831, I believe this is Florida at least. Please uh, state your name and where you're calling from. Your line is open. 831. Hi, my name is Carrie. I'm actually calling from California. California, so, um, Florida. Okay. Yeah. That's okay. So, um, first of all, good evening, Mr. Nermy, and I'm glad you're Hi, was food. it Carrie or Terry? Uh, it's Carrie with a C. Okay. Um, and I wish for full recovery. Um, Thank I'm you. what would be considered a hater, so you'll have to 
excuse my question because it's uh, coming from hate. So you blame hate of Jody or hate of of the uh, the, the defense? Well, well, people who don't um, agree with Jody and what she did are considered haters. So. But, um, Mr. Nermi, you blame Travis in your book for not being able to escape Jody, um, but you weren't able to escape her either. And you've worked with highly manipulative people as part of your career, and through that you've learned how to lay down boundaries, learn the tools that you need to stay safe and healthy. But Travis didn't have that experience. He didn't have those tools. He was a regular guy who met a pretty girl, thought he was going to have fun with her, and it really turned on its head, and he didn't know how to deal with it. And he himself found himself trapped. So you couldn't escape her because she manipulated the court, and he couldn't escape her because she manipulated his heart, his psyche, and he didn't have the tools. So you were both victims of her control and abuse, and I don't understand why, though, you blame Travis for not leaving or telling anybody or, you know, staying trapped, really. Well, I would take issue with the idea that I blame Travis. I don't think I blame him for anything. I think uh, what I said in the book and I, in the chapter you're talking about is how great it would have been if he could have separated, how people in those circumstances in the future should find ways to separate. And and I, I don't think really uh, respectfully the proper analogy can be drawn between the relationship that I had with Miss Arias and the relationship that Mr. Alexander uh, had with Miss Arias. I mean, I was her corner appointed attorney and was was kind of forced to be there. And I think there's different dynamics at play in the relationship uh, between Mr. Alexander and Miss Arias. But um, I certainly do not blame Travis. Uh, I, I just think, think that the point in that chapter in the book was to illustrate the need and the importance um for people involved in those relationships to separate. Okay, let's go out to area code 267. Uh, please state your name and where you're calling from. Uh, your line is open, 267. Uh, this is Kareem Williams calling from oh, uh, Arizona. Hey, how yes, you doing? Hi. hi. So my question for Kurt is... Uh, why the book? And why now? I think I explained that in the book. Explained it on the last show, too. When I definitely made it last show. Um, and what, what do you feel this body of work of yours will bring to the marketplace? What What is that? What do you feel this body of work, your book, what do you feel this trilogy will bring different to the marketplace that's not already there? What do I feel my book brought differently to the marketplace that's not already there? Yeah. Is that the question? My perspective. Okay. Is it? Okay. Thank you for Nothing. the call. Let's go, uh, I think this is the last one, and uh, 215, uh, please state your name and where you're calling from. It's your turn. Hi, it's Kristen. I actually called in last night. Um, Christine? From Philly? Christian. Christian. Um, yeah, well, my phone number is in Florida, yeah. Um, yeah, hi, and hello, Mr. Nermi. I just wanted hi. to tell you that I did read your book. And it was a wonderful book, and your perspective was fascinating. And Thank you. it was very well written. Um, and I'm really glad to hear that you're doing well, and a bunch of us are really, be, you know, cheering you on and uh, just hope that you feel better and you get better real soon. Well, thank um, you very much, Christine. I have a question um, regarding you had mentioned um, the cult of Jody, And I was wondering, because I was around for some of it, um, the trial. How okay. much influence do you think that her cult had over her as far as her court case went? As far as their advice to her, what she should do, what she should say, that sort of thing. Um, did they influence her where it affected your ability to defend her? 
Um, I don't know that I can. I don't know that I can point to any one thing in that regard. You know, I don't know that I can point to say, well, this happened and and she did it this because of this. You know, I so uh, I, I don't know. I, without being able to draw the direct line from point A to B, I can't say that there was necessarily that effect. Does that make oh, sense? That makes sense. I was just curious because I know as time went on, um, her fan base grew. And I know she does communicate with her fan base. She's very big on communicating with them. And I know she has her little secret secret kind of groups and people running websites for her, you know, with the juror list, for example, the list of juror names, they were out right away. And that's a connection to Jody. So I was just wondering if that sort of thing really, if you felt that affected, even the public perception of her. Well, you know, one of the things I, I talk about in the book is my, the, my main focus was what was happening inside the courtroom, not outside the courtroom. And so um, all my energy at the time of the trial was, was the dynamics inside the courtroom. So what these people were doing for her, uh, that sort of thing, was kind of something that when you're actually in trial, you don't have the time to, to monitor as closely. You know what I'm saying? I understand. That makes sense. Well, thank you for answering my questions. And keep doing well. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much for the call. And uh, we have a comment in the uh in in the uh section uh where uh, the chat is going on and I uh, just want to pass this along to you. Sure. Pamela Smith right uh Nermy, hang in there buddy. You could beat this. So I just wanted to get that out to you. Uh Well, I we, uh, I appreciate it and, and maybe they they missed my announcement and you know, I, I we haven't talked about this directly but I referenced myself as a cancer survivor earlier in a, a few weeks back, or well, maybe not even a few weeks back now, maybe about a week back. Uh, I yes. made the announcement that as, as things now stand, I'm in I'm in full remission. So, uh, so you're good 100% news in that regard. And what's that? You're 100 percent clear. Well, 100 percent clear isn't isn't probably the verbiage they will use. What they say is that I'm in remission. <laughs> Right, right. Uh, I no, mean, no doctor nobody's wants to say 100%. Clear of anything. So, you know, you know, I go back in. I'll go back in for, for you know, scans every six months to make no sure no, sure that no tumors are formed, that sort of thing. So when I finished my chemotherapy, uh, you know, a couple weeks back, um, after that I go, I get a scan. They see if there's any tumors, and, and when there's no tumors, uh, they say I'm in remission. So... So for now, uh, I have I have beaten cancer. So um, I'm excited about that, and certainly on World Cancer Day, my thoughts are with everyone that's 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 still battling the disease. And we talk about, you know, there's all kinds of statistics out there about how many people learn every day they have cancer, and and so there's some people out there today uh, learning that, you know. And um, no my thoughts are with them, especially on this. Uh, on this World Cancer Day, so yes, I and, appreciate uh, you I letting want me to get, get to that out. Your books, um, I do want to get to your books, but I do want to ask you uh, uh, another question that involves Jody, but not directly. Uh, as you see, uh, we got you on here, and uh, we had talked about some high-profile cases, including Bill Cosby, including. Um, the uh, situation with the 13-year-old girl, uh, Bret Hart with the cancer. But as you saw, uh, I think all but one caller wanted to talk about Jody Arias. And in your opinion, not just so much as Jody Arias, why do you think people have this fascination, whether it's Casey Anthony whether it's Amanda Knox or, you know, it seems like a lot of people, you know, they either hate the person to death or they love the person to death. You know, they have Facebook clubs. They have all these things that they visit them in the jail. And what did you, you know, being around, you know, Jody, and 
what's your 